welcome to The Marketplace, a show where we examine the mid and small cap companies, the hidden gems of the Bursa Malaysia. Today, we talk to My News Holdings Berhad, its Chief Executive Officer, Dang Tai Luke, joins me. Luke, welcome to The Marketplace. Thank you for having me, Luke. Um, first of all, a lot of people know My News, but they don't really know the history and the journey of the outlet uh, here in Malaysia. Give us a brief history of My News here in the country. Uh, Actually, we just celebrated our 31st anniversary mm. uh, this month. We started uh, in 1996, December. That was uh, our very first store at One Otama Shopping Centre. Uh, it was a very small traditional newsstand that uh, me and my family founded. And from there, uh, uh, we grew. Mm. Uh, we, we, like I say, uh, it was all about print media initially. Mm. Uh, newspapers, uh, magazines was very sellable at that time. Yeah. We grew from there, uh, baby steps, uh, learn, and uh, we grew. From there, we developed a brand, mynews.com. Uh, the first store was actually called MacBeat. Mac is as in magazine, and we sell some thick bits. Yeah. Yeah. That's how we started. And mynews.com was introduced uh, during our third store at Mid Valley Mega Mall. Mm. And from there, uh, uh, we, just, we just add on a store after another. And uh, initially, the growth was uh, slower because we are homegrown and uh, we have to learn everything on our own. Indeed, you've had to evolve even to this day as yes. the future of convenience stores evolve, in the future of retail evolve. Um, but you've been around for the past two decades. When you first started, you are homegrown. My news is homegrown. Yes. At that point in time, what would you think that you know, I can just go up against behemoths like 7-Eleven. We, we didn't have a choice. Uh, I mean, we came from a poor background, uh, not much capital. So what we have is energy and uh, talent. We have to take on it and grow. And uh, there are international brands, there are homegrown brands, but uh, home, homegrown brands can, can grow to be big and strong. A good example is uh, Alpha Mart in Indonesia. Mm. It has outgrown all the international brands. So you just have to work hard, uh, be innovative, and just go at it. And indeed, you do have a lot of competitors from the first day right until, uh, until now, be it local or international players. So in your mind, what sets my news apart from its competitors? We are innovative, uh, uh, not any less innovative as uh, the competitors. Uh, you look at us, uh, in fact, the WH Smith UK brand is operated by us as well, uh, locally operated by us. So we have actually taken on an international brand and we are doing very well with that brand in Malaysia, 50-50% uh, joint venture. And MyNews.com itself has been taken out of the country um, in Myanmar. Uh, we have two stores. Uh, at Yangon International Airport. So in a way, we are local, we are international, and uh, we have been uh, catching up, we are innovating uh, fast, we are changing fast, so there's really no difference uh, uh, between us and any other brands. But it's just two that you see in the market. stores in Myanmar. Do you have plans to expand your wings further, at, at least into ASEAN, where the pot potential is quite high? Yes, uh, I do agree with you, but Domestically, the, the, the opportunity is, is ample. Mm. There's, there's a lot to do here. Is it now? Do you, do you, don't you think convenience stores in Malaysia, the sector is very saturated? That's what the, the, the market perception is. That's what the consumer look at. That's the way uh, Malaysians perceive. But <clears throat> from, a, from an industry player point of view, uh, like myself, uh, it's far from saturation. Uh, I call it underserved and underdeveloped, uh, mainly because our convenience uh, industry is behind the other countries, mm. behind Thailand, behind Singapore, way behind Japan, Hong Kong, Taiwan. So uh, when you are behind and when you are underdeveloped, uh, that means there is a lot to do, and we know that we can do a lot more. So you're saying that traditional convenience stores may be saturated, but um, a new age convenience stores with new technologies and new met, uh, business models that is underdeveloped here in Malaysia. If 
when you talk about uh, the the modern consumer trend, uh, lifestyle or, or consumer preference, uh, traditional is uh, will be replaced, mm. will become irrelevant. Mm. Uh, there are now about twenty four thousand mom and pop traditional stores. Uh, sooner or later, they will be replaced. When I say replaced, it's not like taking over their shop one by one, like you go out and we take over. They will be phased out. They will be phased out uh, by uh, the changes. Um, their children may not be interested to take over the business. They may get tired. Uh, the price point uh, may not be as attractive. Their store setup may not be as attractive. Younger generations may not want to walk into that kind of store. So, uh, like, like all the other industries, the modern ones, the branded ones, will replace the traditional. We'll talk about more about that. Very interesting. We'll have to take a short break. We'll come back with Dang Tai Luk, Chief Executive Officer of My News Holdings Brahat Marketplace. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the marketplace. I've been speaking to Dang Tai Luke, Chief Executive Officer of My News Holdings Berkhad. Uh, now, look before the break, we were talking about the traditional mom and pop stores and yes. um, convenience behemoths such as yourself and also 7 Eleven. So, you think there is going to come a day where there will be no mom and pop stores anymore, replaced by huge convenience store giants? Will that day, dark day for some, will it come? There will be, uh, maybe in smaller number. Uh, in, in, in Places where maybe it is uh, uh, at, a, at a very rural place, mm. uh, maybe in some isolated places, uh, one, 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 one or two here and there. But um, I would like to, to, to bring you to the, the more developed countries, uh, the scenario in more developed countries. If you look at Japan, there are close to 60,000 convenience stores. And out of this 60,000, 90% is operated by the main major three brands. The others are operated, are mostly operated by, 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 by the other smaller brands. So it will be that kind of trend. Mm. Majority uh, of the traditional store will be replaced by the branded ones. Talking about international convenience stores, we've recently had um, stores like Family Mart, chains like Family Mart coming to Malaysia. Are you scared? Uh, no, scared is uh, absolutely uh, not <laughs> the right term uh, or, or, or rather the right way. I feel uh, we were born into comp competition. Uh, when, when we came into the picture, uh, the biggest competitor today and then uh, was already around. So we were actually born in a competition. I mean, who are we then? We're just a, a mm. small, really small fly, starting from one store. And the competitor has a chain of it. But, but we develop, develop and uh, we, we, we grow from there. You see, uh, in the uh, capitalist economy, competition is always, yeah. is always there. Yeah, yeah. And it's good. Uh, and indeed, one innovate. has to have the edge over the other competitors in a capitalist economy. And I can say that your edge is that you're constantly trying to innovate. Um, most recently, you have entered into collaborations with two Japanese companies to develop ready-to-eat food, similar to what we are seeing in Japan, but you want to adopt it in Malaysia. Tell us a bit uh, more about that. Yes. Uh, when I mention underdeveloped and underserved, mm. uh, it relates to this as well. You know, in order for us to sell the product, you must be able to get the suppliers to, to supply you such products. Uh, the supply chain in Malaysia is weak. It's weak, meaning to say that uh, if, a, if, a, if a major chain store uh, would ask somebody to produce enough supply to the whole chain, uh, there may not be a taker. Even if there is, the quality may not be there. I like the more developed country. So, uh, 
the future of convenience stores is that they have to constantly innovate. The, gone are the days when you can just sell magazines and food. You have to be sort of like your own family mart. You have to produce your own food. You have to have your sort of small deli in that store. So is this what you're gunning for? Yes, yes. Uh, convenience store is... Uh, you, you can sell many SKUs, many types of products. You walk inside a convenience store, uh, in a 1,000 square feet, you're able to find 1,500 different types of products. That's what it is. It, food, convenience, bill payments. So you have to get the right product mix mm. that the customers want. Grab, go, this is what I do, convenience. So the product mix change from time to time. The trend now is food, ready to eat food. Mm. Grab, go, eat. On that same note, we're also seeing an increase of online stores. Um, Alibaba is doing this a lot in China. They're calling it new retail. And of course, this is going to affect even convenience stores. So do you feel there's still a place for brick and mortar stores? Uh, because you don't seem to be going online so aggressively, at least not for now. There is a lot of talk about uh, whether e-commerce will replace brick and mortar, uh, whether brick and mortar will be wiped out. Yeah, you can just sit at home and buy your groceries or whatever you want, or your drinks, or your, even your cigarettes, and it will get delivered to you. It will, there will be a lot of adjustment. Uh, maybe there will be a, a major scale down of brick and mortar store of certain category. But for convenience, I truly see it as the most rele relevant brick and mortar uh, stores or business uh, next to e-commerce. Mm. There will be convergence, there will be overlap. In fact, as of now, we are doing uh, a, we, are, we are the drop-off pickup points of the e-commerce business. Hmm. You imagine a convenient chain having hundreds or thousands of stores everywhere. Uh, we are able to reach the customer faster than the e-commerce logistic, maybe. You know, hmm. if, we, if, if the stores become uh, the pick-up point, drop-off point, you know. Having said that, uh, you look at the e-commerce players. Alibaba comes down to buy retail stores. Amazon bought Whole Food, which is a retail supermarket. So, so brick so, and mortar is still very much a necessity yes, in today's digitized very world. Much, yes. Very briefly, you achieved the, the, the very ambitious target of opening 17 new outlets in the FY17 and for FY18, you are targeting 19 new stores. Doable? Yes. yes. We have achieved 70 for the past two years. Uh, 90 is our... Uh, You're on track. Track, yes. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Dang Tai Luk, Chief Executive Officer of My News Holdings, Berhad. You're welcome. And that wraps up this episode of The Marketplace. Uh, be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, at 501Awani. Download our app, as you can see there. Available on Google Play and also the Apple App Store. I'm Luqman Haris. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Thank you.